Hey guys, how's it going? Josh here. So this video is going to be in three parts. Uh, the first part right here, it will be talking about Spider-Man Peter Parker, you know, directly. The second part will be talking about Norman Osborn and, you know, how I think they should go about him and the villain, the other villain I think that, that should be in the MCU reboot. And uh, last but not least, I'll talk about the love interest, you know, Gwen, Mary Jane, who should we have? So the reason why this, this is going to be split in three parts is because if I talk about all three, with the way I seem to be talking, this might eighth time recording it it will be a long video i don't want to have you guys sit through like a 20 something minute long video if i can just release it in chunks that are more specific that you know you guys would probably rather prefer watching so without further ado let's get directly into spider-man peter parker so definitely i think the backbone of his origin should be the oz formula aka the ultimate origin the reason why is because the ultimate origin form pretty much just like a lot of the other superhero origins in the ultimate universe traces back to Captain America and the Super Soldier. In the very same way, a lot of the MCU stuff traces back to Captain America and the Super Soldier Serum. Thus, I think just naturally, in regards to you know connectivity, things like that, the Oz formula works great. Um, but don't show the origin story. That's another thing. Skim it. You know, very Incredible Hulk style, just skim the origin. Uh, characters like Spider-Man, Batman, we've seen the origin a million and one times, we don't want to see it again. Aunt May needs to be included in this movie too, I feel like that's a no-brainer, but obviously, if I left that out, someone might in the comments, you know, think I'm an idiot and thought I forgot about Aunt May, even though, like, that's impossible. But another thing is show Peter Parker get bullied by Flash Thompson, for the love of God, beyond one scene where he gets picked on a little bit, and then that's it. The reason why is because a lot that this shows so much will and so much about the character of Spider-Man that he has the power to literally snap someone like Flash Thompson in half, but he doesn't. He turns the other cheek and he's tolerant. You can really use that to send a message to kids if that's the route you know moms and everything want to go with for bullying. Because I know there's a large anti-bullying movement right now, so you can definitely use this to kind of support that anti-bullying movement. You know, showing you know what you can turn the other cheek just because you could you know physically harm the other person and retaliate doesn't mean you should. Like you know you can kind of twist it in that way. And also, if they want to do Agent Venom down the line, or just, you know, show character progression with Flash down the line, have, yes, he has to start off as a bully. And he has to really come off as a bully. Um, that's just how it ha kind of has to go. Midtown High also, I think, should be a magnet school, if possible. You know, it's another way to show that Peter Parker is really, really smart without telling us he's really, really smart. Like, if he's at a magnet school, we know he's smart. You don't have to tell us he's top of the class. You know, it's just presumed by the fact that it's a magnet school He's smart, just like if you have, if you show someone with five Olympic gold medals, it's assumed they're really good at their sport. Um, you don't have to say how good they are. You know, it's that kind of same principle. Um, honestly, I don't know how magnet schools in New York work, but I assume they work by you being smart. So that's why I say that. Anyways, uh, moving on, class and schoolwork, I think, should be featured in this show. The way they can go about it is they could have Peter Parker in class exhausted out of his mind from the night before being a superhero or they could do something where he's trying to study for a test or finish a homework assignment or maybe he has a you know a project to do with you know a lab partner or something like that and he totally fails at either appearing or you know studying whatever have you because like a police siren goes off and he has to save the day you know like show that you know supposedly in the mcu spider-man film they're going to show him struggling with being a student a teenager and a superhero this is one of those ways you can do it. Like, really take advantage of that. Because in the Raimi films and the Amazing Spider-Man web films, they kind of just jumped over it. You know, like, they had, like, maybe one or two scenes showing that, but it wasn't something that really carried over. Um, like, they showed that so they could be like, yeah, we showed it, and they just totally kind of dropped it and moved on. This is a part of the character, that struggle he, he has, you know, really maintaining, you know, balancing all different parts of his life. Please show that. You know, like this picture has right here. He's burying his back, his clothes in his backpack while he changes to Spider-Man. Like, a scene like that would be pretty cool to see, too. Like, you know, show stuff like that. Um, also, his web fluid web shooters. Show him making both of those things. Now, I'm not saying... Like, if he already has his web shooters, I'm totally fine with that. I don't want to see him building it from the ground up. I mean, just have it so, like, we know he made it. Um, the same thing for the web fluid. Show he made it. The web cartridges are his. They're not bought from Oscorp. You know, like... Please show that stuff. It's another one of those things where like, you can show he's smart without telling. And the benefit of this being like the sixth movie of Spider-Man that's been made is the fact that you don't have to show him making it for the first time. 
he can already have it and we'd be already okay with it. We just want a good Spider-Man story. You don't have to give us all the whys, if that makes sense. Also, while as Spider-Man, please give him non-stop quippage. I want him to quip so much a, a villain almost pees his pants. Not from laughing, but just from being so mad he can't pay attention and he can't focus. Because that's who Spider-Man is. He kind of demoralizes his villains, you could say, um, with the amount of jokes he says. It's, it's actually like a roast. The roast of Chameleon or the roast of Craven the Hunter um, whenever he fights Spider-Man. So please show that. That's a part of the character that a lot of people enjoy and a lot of people want to see more of. And also Spider-Sense, last but not least. Please show a Spider-Sense. Um, by spider sense, I don't mean him stopping time and seemingly knowing where everything is around him. I mean more so like the headache that he gets, you know, when there's danger around. Um, the involuntary reaction. Like they, they've shown the involuntary reaction where like he dodges a bullet, something like that. That's awesome. But show the fact that he gets headaches, you know, if danger's around, you know, he kinda has to, you know, focus on that to really find the you know, the threat. That's all that's it. That's all I really want to see. Um really there's Honestly, to make a good Spider-Man movie, it's really the process of elimination at this point. Because you've already had five Spider-Man movies. All the Spider-Man movies have had goods. All, some of them have had some bads. Um, more stick out than others. So really, you can just evaluate them and go from there. So, that's about it. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys later with the next part where I talk about the villains. Oh, hey. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed what you just saw. I don't know what exactly you just saw, but I hope you guys enjoy it. And if you really did like it, go check out our other stuff. You know, we have social media, Facebook, Twitter. The link should be somewhere here. Also, we have other channels too. We have our movie video game channel. We have our music channel. Obviously, our comic book channel too, because we know we do all that entertainment awesomeness. We also have a website. Go to our website, hypernetworkyt.com. And check out our other videos. Uh, that's all I really have to say. It's Josh, and you know I hope you guys enjoyed you know what you watched.